Alkanes and cycloalkanes are nonpolar molecules. These molecules are held together by London dispersion forces, which are dependent on surface area. As a result, these molecules are soluble in low polarity solvents and insoluble in water. Their boiling point and melting point increase with increasing molar mass, as exemplified here from propane, butane, and pentane. Boiling point decreases as the degree of branching increases. If we are to compare the different 5-carbon alkanes, here is pentane, 2-methylbutane, and 2,2-dimethylpropane. Dimethylpropane is more compact compared to the linear pentane. As a result, it offers less surface area for interaction and thus lower attraction between molecules via London dispersion forces. This applies to all other alkenes. With no functional groups, alkanes and cycloalkanes have low reactivity towards common reagents. Their most common reactions are combustion reaction. This is a reaction with oxygen at high temperature, which normally produces carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Another reaction common to alkanes and cycloalkanes is the halogenation reaction. Here, a hydrogen on alkane or cycloalkane is replaced by a halogen. Combustion reactions produce heat, thus we can readily measure enthalpy changes for the complete oxidation of alkanes and cycloalkanes. The amount of heat evolved can be accurately measured in a calorimeter. This can be used to measure relative stabilities of isomers. In this example, the two isomers of butane are compared. Both the combustion reactions of these isomers will result in the same amounts of products. The heat of combustions for these isomers revealed that 2-methylpropane is 9 kJ per mole more stable than the linear butane. These types of measurements allow us to analyze the stabilities of molecules, such as the one used for measuring ring strains of cycloalkanes. If you mix an alkane or cycloalkane with a halogen, such as fluorine, chlorine, or bromine in a cold, dark chamber. Nothing will happen. However, when this mixture is exposed to heat or light, then a halogenation reaction will occur. Halogenation reaction starts from the homolytic cleavage of this halogen. In the presence of heat or light, the halogen molecule will become Two component radicals. We call this step chain initiation. In the presence of this radical, it can initiate chain propagation. The chlorine radical can take one electron from this bond to form HCl. The remaining electron will be retained by carbon. To form the methyl radical. Once the methyl radical is formed, it can take one electron from this bond to form a new bond with chlorine and produce a new chlorine radical. This process will repeat over and over as long as there are reactants available. It is also possible for two chlorine radicals to meet each other and form a bond. This process will terminate the reaction since the reactive chlorine radical will disappear from the mixture. It is also possible for two methyl radicals to form a bond with each other and form the ethane molecule. 
For a simple alkane such as methane, it is easy to judge the outcome of a halogenation reaction. There's only one type of hydrogen that will be taken. But for the more complex alkanes such as butane or 2-methylpropane, it becomes a bit complicated. Which of these hydrogens will be taken to form the radical? For butane, there are two types of hydrogens, a primary and a secondary hydrogen. Take note that based on the symmetry of the molecule, this hydrogen is identical to this one, and this hydrogen is identical to this one. Similarly, for 2-methylpropane, this hydrogen is similar to this one and also similar to this one. Again, there are two types of hydrogens here, a tertiary hydrogen and a primary hydrogen. Fortunately, we know that radicals are not created equal. Depending on the type of carbon, some radicals form rather easily. We now know that tertiary radicals are more stable than secondary radicals which are more stable than primary radicals and the methyl radical is the least stable. Thus for betaine, this type of radical will form very fast. For this branch alkane, this tertiary radical is more likely. This is not to say that the primary radicals will not form, but they will be in lower proportion. These radicals are stabilized by several factors such as hyperconjugation, resonance, and electron donating groups. These carbon radicals are considered electron deficient centers and surrounding groups that will be able to donate electrons are beneficial to the stability of these radicals. These factors will be described later in more detail as we move forward in this course. Assuming that we continue and react this secondary radical with bromine, we can expect that 2 bromobutane will form as the major product. Once this product is formed, there's no guarantee that the reaction will stop. As long as the ingredients are there, more radicals are likely to form. In this case, which hydrogen do you think will be taken by this bromine radical? Bromine contains three lone pairs of electrons, which I didn't show here. But these electrons may be used to stabilize a radical. Hence, it is expected that this bromine radical may take this proton. The reason is that this bromine atom can provide its lone pairs of electrons to stabilize this electron deficient carbon. The radical carbon is sp2 hybridized, hence it has a trigonal planar arrangement. The new bond to carbon can be connected in this position or connected in this position in the same probability. Bromine is more selective than chlorine. In this example, the reaction of chlorine with propane gives 45% 1-chloropropane and 55% 2-chloropropane. Clearly, 2-chloropropane is favored because it forms the secondary radical, which is more stable. When compared to bromine, you will see that this reaction will produce around 99% of 2-bromopropane, revealing the more selective nature of bromination. This is because bromine reacts quite slowly compared to chlorine and enables it to form a more stable radical. Chlorine has no selectivity. The reason is it reacts very fast. 
Iodine reacts too slowly and its halogenation reaction is not synthetically useful. Cyclopropane and cyclobutane undergo addition reactions which involve ring opening and yield open chain products. For example, if you react cyclopropane with hydrogen in the presence of a metal catalyst at relatively high temperature, the ring will open to form a linear alkane. Reaction of HBr with cyclopropane will also open the ring to form addition products. The reaction of chlorine with cyclopropane will give the expected dichlorination product. The reason for this reactivity is because of the ring strain of cyclopropane and cyclobutane. This ring strain is not present in such an extent in cyclopentane and cyclohexane. Thus, these cycloalkanes chiefly undergo the free radical substitution reactions typical of acyclic alkanes.